Hey, how's it going? My name's John McLennan, and I'm here with GuitarControl.com. Hope you're doing fantastic. Today's lesson is on a song called Chitlin's Concarne by Kenny Burrell. It's a great blues in the key of C with a Latin flavor. And uh, be sure to click the link below so you can get the tab. You can follow along with this video. I'm going to break it down for you in a couple sections. I'm going to show you how to comp through the entire song and how to play the chords, basically. And then we're going to get into the main melody and soloing. All right, well, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to comp and how to play these chord shapes that Kenny's using. So the first chord is a C7 sharp 9, and the chord progression of this song follows a basic 12-bar blues, just using the 1, the 4, and the 5. But the 1 chord is a C7 sharp 9. And this is a really cool sound playing it on the lower strings. I first learned this chord from Jimi Hendrix playing it, you know, with the root on the fifth string like this, you know, three, two, three, four. But when you move it down here, it, it kind of starts to sound a lot jazzier and just fatter sounding to me. I, I like that sound. So I see a lot of people playing it this way. I, I, I prefer it with this chord shape. So that's eight, seven, eight, eight, eight. And it's cool because you've got the major third on the low strings and then the sharp nine up there. So that's what I'm going to play for the one chord. That's going to go for four bars, just staying on the one, nice and simple. And then you move down basically to the, almost that same grip, just relocated down one string. And this becomes an F9 chord. I've got eight, seven, eight, eight, eight. Okay? That's for two bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Then back to C7 sharp nine. Then for the turnaround, I'm going to use that same chord as F9, but I'm going to bring it up two frets. It's going to be a G9. 10, 9, 10, 10, 10. And then down a whole step, F9, and back home to C7 sharp 9. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through just playing very sparsely, trying to play on down beats, you know, and really marking these chords through the 12 bar blues. So try and play along. Here we go. just starts over when you get to the end, just like a 12-bar blues. One more chorus, here we go. So that would be a cool way to practice just putting the chords on the downbeats and just getting used to those grips. Maybe those are new for you and you're trying to get a clean sound and make sure you can hear all the notes in the chord. That's important. So the other thing you'll notice, I'm using my thumb. Kind of on slower tunes, you know, and a lot of times when I'm feeling it, when I'm in that West mood, I'll use my thumb, you know, and it's just like, gets a warm sound. You can see if I use a pick, it totally changes the tone right away. 
So I like to use my thumb. And then uh, let's add a little bit of rhythm to that now. So here we go. So basically what I'm doing is, you know, just adding some eighth notes. I'm doing this rhythm one, two, and three, and four, and, and it's just a, 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 you know, sequence of two. Ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, and kind of going through the chords using that comping rhythm. One, two, and you could apply that to four chords. Back to one. That's how I would handle the harmony, you know, and I would listen to the other musicians and I would try and find a rhythm that's, you know, going to complement what they're doing and also kind of build and, and create motion. So the next step is learning the melody. And that's, uh, you know, the classic... riff there, and I play it on the lower strings again, just like that C7 sharp 9. I kind of want to get as fat of a tone as I can, so I'm going to play it on my bottom string. You know, you can do it here, but it's, it's, for some reason, you know, the reason is, is that it's a thicker string. But that, just sound, that just sounds so much fatter to me. So I'm starting with my third finger on the eighth fret. And I'm B2, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and, and that's 8, 8, 6, 8, 8, 8. back to 8-6, so. to the 8th fret, do, do, 6, 8, 8, 8, do, 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 do. So first four bars, and then it goes again, over the 4 chord now, do, 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 do. Okay, so it's just like your your typical lyrical blues form is like A, A, B. You know, so here's the first riff, A. Okay, so that's A. Then you do it again, because it's an A, A, B. It's over different chords. So it sounds different. And then you're going to do the the B part, which is like the turnaround, do, 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 do. starts the same way, 8, 8, 6, 8, 8, 8, then you take your third finger and you slide up from the 8th fret to the 10th fret 
on the fifth string, drop your first finger on A, and that's like a little blues. Really, all this is coming out of the C blues scale. And then uh, eight slide to nine. Such a short melody in blues. A lot of times you play them twice. Four chord back to the one. Okay, let's see what that sounds like over the blues changes here. Okay, so you could see that I was starting to hint now at the final part, which would be combining that melody with some comping in between. So an example of that, you know, might be in the first four bars. So whenever that melody takes a break, I'm going to hit some accents with the chords. That sounds like with the with the with the uh, looper here. So that's how I'd get through the melody, you know, and you got a lot of stuff there. You can, you know, work with just the comping, you can work with the melody, and then you can put them together like that. And that's kind of a cool, you know, solo, like you could play that solo guitar. You know, and it'll sound full because it sounds like you've got, you're bouncing back and forth between playing the melody and then being the rhythm section. And they respond to each other, you know. Now the last step, you know, uh, of course, would be getting into solos, and for that you can really use, and most of Kenny's solo is blues scale, you know, so that's going to be this guy. I mean even the melody, right? You have to look at the melody and then look at like the solos on it, and that'll teach you how to play over the blues. I mean, when you play this melody, and if you know your C blues scale, I mean, that's telling you, it's like, oh, well, what scale can I play over these chords? The blues, right? It's right there in the music, you know? So let's give that a try and just improvise a little bit over you know, the same 12 bars with a blues scale. Here we go.
I hope you enjoyed this lesson. For more in-depth information, click on the annotation on your screen or the iCard if you're on mobile, and you can check out one of my guitar courses. I have one specifically on blues called Blues Power that you really might dig if you were watching this video, as well as a few others. All right, well, thanks so much. I'm John McLennan, and we'll see you in the next video lesson. Thanks for watching.